ecologist with Environment Canada. I heard you have a question for me. How are forecasts made? That's a great question, Ivy. Forecasts are made by meteorologists that work at weather centers. There's a whole bunch of weather centers across, uh, across Canada. Let's look at some of the information that meteorologists use when they're making the forecast. I'm just going to show you on the Environment Canada website here some information that the forecasters are using. So they use weather observations from places all across uh, Canada. And in this case, we've got some weather observations from across New Brunswick. And we've got things like uh, air temperature and wind speed and direction and humidity and uh, pressure and visibility. And so forecasters use this information to, uh, to help them understand what's going on right now and, and what the weather's going to be like in the future. Okay, and we'll look at some of the other information that uh, meteorologists use. So that we're looking uh, at the radar. Now the radar detects rainfall or any kind of precipitation. And for today, as a matter of fact, we're looking at Tropical Storm Michael, which is moving by well to the south of New Brunswick, so we don't have any, any rainfall right now. We'll look at some other information that forecasters use, and this is uh, a satellite picture. It's, it's looking at the weather systems themselves, the clouds associated with the system. And again, here's New Brunswick here, and St. Stephen is around this area. And we can see the cloud associated with Michael, which is uh, moving by just to the south of Nova Scotia. Meteorologists also use information from weather balloons. So this is a, this is a weather balloon. It's full of helium, and it's going to go right up, right up through the atmosphere, probably up to about 100,000 feet. And attached to that is some weather instruments to give them information about wind speed and temperature and humidity. And, and that's really some essential information for the forecast models to be able to to uh, predict how the weather's going to change over time. So forecasters, in addition to weather observations and um, satellite pictures and, and radar information, they also use uh, computer forecast models. And so this is the forecast model, um, which is used by the forecasters to help uh, make the forecast. And this is a loop of, of the uh, weather system that move, that's moving by. So Michael uh, is here, the start of the day, and moving on by uh, to the south of Nova Scotia. What can I do to help with forecasts? That's a great question, Ivy. There's a, there's a program that, that kids like you and adults can get involved in. It's called COCORES, and it's a, it's a national program all across Canada and the United States, and folks get a, a weather gauge, and they measure precipitation and report it on the COCORES website every day and, and this information really helps meteorologists and farmers and other folks in agriculture and flood forecasters to understand how much rain has fallen or snow has fallen and and what some of the impacts are from uh, from weather systems let's go out and check on the rain gauge that's a great idea ivy let's go out and see how much rain fell last night ivy here's your coco res rain gauge it looks like it rained last night let's see how much fell on the top is the funnel, but inside is the graduated cylinder, and we can see how much rain fell. Can you read that off? 10 millimeters. Perfect, 10 millimeters, exactly. So Ivy, after you take your measurement, you, all you got to do is empty out the precipitation gauge, and you put it back inside with the funnel on top. And then you're ready for the next measurement if it rains overnight, or if there's no precipitation, then you'll report zero tomorrow. What do we do with snow? That's a great question, Ivy. So in the winter time, when you get snow, we don't want to leave the funnel on top because it'll just get plugged up with snow. So what we do, we take the funnel off and we take the tube out and we leave the gauge just like that. And so when it snows, the snow will go into the gauge and then we'll melt the snow and we'll get the water content of the snow from the, uh, from the rain gauge. What do I use this for? That's another good question, Ivy. So in the winter time, in addition to the snow that you measure in the snowfall gauge, we're going to use the ruler to measure the amount of new snow that falls on the ground. And, and that information is important to forecasters as well. So now that we've gone out to the, to the weather gauge and we've measured the rainfall over the last 24 hours, it's really simple to go on the Cocoraz website and enter the information. We can just enter the amount of rain that fell here and we're going to put in 10 millimeters because that's what, that's what was in the gauge. There was no snowfall 
So we're going to put in a zero here for the snowfall. And then after that, all we have to do is say submit and the information goes off to the CocoRes website and folks can view it back on the, on the map. Thank you very much for coming and seeing me. You're very welcome, Ivy. You had some great questions and I look forward to getting your CocoRes observations. Thank you.